My husband cheated on me with my best friend, so I ruined their lives at our anniversary party and found the strength to move on. If someone had told me a year ago that my life would turn into a soap opera, I would have laughed in their face. I thought I had it all, an amazing husband, a best friend who felt like a sister, and a life that on the surface seemed perfect. But, as they say, ignorance is bliss. And I was blissfully unaware of the storm brewing just beneath the surface. Tom and I had been married for six years. We met in college, where he was the charming guy who could make anyone laugh, and I was the girl who always seemed to be running late to class. Our paths crossed at a mutual friend's party, and from that moment on, we were inseparable. Tom had a way of making everything seem brighter, more exciting. He was my rock, my confidant, my everything. Sarah entered our lives shortly after Tom and I started dating. She was my roommate in college, and we clicked instantly. She was bubbly, outgoing, and always up for an adventure. The three of us became a tight-knit trio, navigating the ups and downs of college life together. When Tom proposed to me, it was Sarah who helped me plan the wedding, who stood by my side as my maid of honor, and who cheered us on as we started our married life. Over the years, our bond only grew stronger. Sarah became a regular fixture at our house, joining us for dinners, movie nights, and weekend getaways. Tom and I often joked that she was like our third wheel, but in the best possible way. I never once doubted her loyalty or her place in our lives. As our sixth anniversary approached, I decided to throw a grand party to celebrate. It had been a challenging year, with both of us juggling demanding jobs and dealing with the everyday stresses of life. I wanted to remind Tom and myself of the love and joy that had brought us together in the first place. I poured my heart into planning the event, envisioning an evening filled with laughter, memories, and maybe a few happy tears. Sarah was, as always, my right-hand woman in organizing everything. She helped me pick out the venue, plan the menu, and even designed the invitations. We spent countless evenings going over every detail, our excitement building as the date drew nearer. Tom, meanwhile, seemed pleased but distracted. I attributed his behavior to work stress. His job had been particularly demanding lately, and I figured he was just worn out. But as the weeks passed, I began to notice subtle changes in Tom. He was more distant, often coming home late or spending long hours on his phone. When I asked him about it, he brushed it off, saying he was just busy with a big project. I wanted to believe him, but there was a nagging feeling in the back of my mind that something wasn't right. I confided in Sarah about my worries, and she was quick to reassure me. You're overthinking it, she said with a laugh. Tom loves you more than anything. He's probably just stressed about the party. You know how guys are with anniversaries. I wanted to believe her. I needed to believe her. Sarah had always been the voice of reason, the one who could calm my anxieties and make everything seem okay. But despite her reassurances, the unease lingered. One evening, about a week before the anniversary party, I came home early from work, hoping to surprise Tom with his favorite takeout. I walked into the house, expecting to find him working in his home office or maybe relaxing in front of the TV. Instead, I found him and Sarah in the living room, their heads close together, whispering urgently. The look of guilt that flashed across their faces when they saw me was undeniable. Hey, what's going on? I asked, trying to keep my voice casual. Just talking about the party, Tom said quickly, standing up and moving towards me. Sarah was helping me with a surprise for you. I forced a smile, trying to ignore the sinking feeling in my stomach. That's sweet. I can't wait to see what you've planned. Sarah nodded, her smile a little too bright. It's going to be amazing, Claire. You're going to love it. That night, as I lay in bed next to Tom, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. The whispers, the guilty looks, it all added up to a picture I didn't want to see. But I pushed the doubts aside, telling myself that I was being paranoid. After all, this was Tom and Sarah, my husband and my best friend. They would never betray me, right? The night of the anniversary party arrived, and I threw myself into the festivities, determined to make it a night to remember. The venue was beautifully decorated, the food was delicious, and the atmosphere was filled with laughter and celebration. Friends and family mingled, sharing stories and toasting to our six years of marriage. Tom seemed genuinely happy, his arm around me as we greeted our guests. Sarah flitted around the room, ensuring everything ran smoothly. For a moment, I let myself believe that all my fears were unfounded, that this night would be the fresh start we needed. But as the evening wore on, I began to notice more odd behavior. 
Tom and Sarah exchange glances that seemed too intimate, their touches lingering just a little too long. I tried to dismiss it, to focus on the joy of the occasion, but the doubts crept back in, stronger than ever. Finally, as the night was drawing to a close and the guests were beginning to leave, I decided to confront Tom. I couldn't carry the weight of my suspicions any longer. I pulled him aside, my heart pounding in my chest. Tom, we need to talk, I said, my voice trembling. He looked at me, confusion and concern in his eyes. What's wrong, Claire? What's going on with you and Sarah? I blurted out, unable to hold back any longer. I can't shake the feeling that something isn't right. For a moment, he just stared at me, his face a mask of shock. Then he sighed, running a hand through his hair. Claire, I think you're just stressed. This party has been a lot of work and- Don't lie to me, Tom, I interrupted, my voice rising. I saw the way you two were looking at each other tonight. I saw the way you touched her. Just tell me the truth. He hesitated, his eyes filled with a mixture of guilt and fear. Claire, I- But before he could finish, Sarah appeared, her face pale. What's going on? She asked, looking between us. I was just asking Tom what the hell is going on between you two, I said, my voice shaking with anger and hurt. Sarah's eyes widened and she opened her mouth to speak, but no words came out. The silence was deafening, the truth hanging in the air between us. I turned to Tom, my heart breaking. How could you do this to me, to us? He reached out to touch me, but I pulled away, my tears spilling over. Claire, I'm so sorry. I never meant for this to happen. Sarah finally found her voice, her eyes filled with tears. Claire, please let me explain. It wasn't supposed to be like this. I shook my head, unable to process the betrayal. I trusted you, both of you, and this is how you repay me? The party continued around us, unaware of the drama unfolding in our little corner. I felt like the ground had been ripped out from under me, my entire world crashing down in an instant. I turned and walked away, my mind a whirlwind of emotions. Anger, hurt, betrayal, they all blended together in a storm of pain. I needed to get out of there to find some space to breathe. As I stepped outside into the cool night air, I felt a strange sense of clarity. This was the end of one chapter, but it didn't have to be the end of my story. I would find a way to pick up the pieces, to move forward and find strength in the aftermath of this betrayal. The days following the anniversary party were a blur of disbelief and pain. The betrayal was still fresh, a wound that throbbed with every thought of Tom and Sarah. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't stop replaying that night in my head. It felt surreal, like I was living someone else's nightmare. Tom tried to talk to me to explain, but I couldn't bear to hear his excuses. I packed a bag and left our house, seeking refuge at a hotel for a few days. I needed space, time to think, and a way to process the betrayal that had shattered my world. Sarah's repeated attempts to reach out went ignored. I wasn't ready to hear her voice, let alone her excuses. I spent those first few days in a fog, barely able to function. I called in sick to work, not ready to face the world. I wandered around the city aimlessly, trying to wrap my head around the betrayal. How had I been so blind? How had I not seen the signs? On the third day, I finally answered one of Tom's calls. I needed to hear his explanation, to understand why he had destroyed everything we had built together. Claire, please, just let me explain, he said, his voice filled with desperation. Explain what, Tom? I snapped, my anger bubbling to the surface. How you cheated on me with my best friend, how you lied to my face for God knows how long. It wasn't supposed to happen, he said, his voice breaking. It started as a mistake, a stupid drunken mistake, and then it just continued. I didn't know how to stop it. I felt a surge of rage. You didn't know how to stop it? How about not starting it in the first place? I know, Claire, I know, I'm so sorry. I never wanted to hurt you. Well, you did. You hurt me more than I ever thought possible. The pain in my voice was palpable. I trusted you, Tom. I trusted both of you. I know and I don't expect you to forgive me, but I want to make it right. Please just give me a chance. Make it right? How do you plan to make this right? You can't undo what you did. You can't take back the betrayal. Claire, I'm begging you. Let's go to counseling. Let's try to fix this. I love you. I laughed bitterly. Love? Don't talk to me about love, Tom. You don't do this to someone you love. I hung up the phone, my heart heavy. The anger and pain were overwhelming, but I knew I couldn't wallow in them forever. I had to find a way to move forward, to reclaim my life from the wreckage. I decided to go back home. I couldn't hide in a hotel forever, 
and I needed to start facing the reality of my situation. When I walked into our house, it felt foreign, as if it belonged to someone else. The memories of happier times were tainted by the betrayal that had unfolded within these walls. Tom was there, looking haggard and defeated. Claire, I'm so sorry, he said, his eyes pleading. I don't want to hear it, I said, my voice cold. I'm here to get my things. I'll be staying with a friend for a while. Please, Claire, don't do this. We can fix this. There's nothing to fix, Tom. You and Sarah destroyed everything. I packed my bags in silence, ignoring his attempts to talk. I felt numb, the pain too much to bear. When I was done, I walked out without looking back. I couldn't stay in that house, surrounded by memories that now felt like lies. Lily, my oldest friend, welcomed me into her home without hesitation. She had been out of town during the anniversary party and was horrified when I told her what had happened. I can't believe they did this to you, she said, wrapping me in a hug. You don't deserve this. No, I don't, I agreed, tears streaming down my face but I'm not going to let them get away with it. Over the next few weeks, I began to formulate a plan. I wasn't going to sit back and let Tom and Sarah ruin my life. I was going to make them pay for what they did. They thought they could betray me and get away with it, but they were wrong. I was stronger than they knew and I wasn't afraid to fight back. I spent hours poring over our finances, gathering evidence of their affair. I found receipts, emails, and messages that confirmed everything. I felt a sick satisfaction as I collected the proof, knowing it would be their downfall. Lily was my confidant and co-conspirator. She encouraged me, supported me, and helped me plan my revenge. They deserve everything that's coming to them, she said, her eyes flashing with anger. You deserve justice. With her help, I devised a plan to expose Tom and Sarah in the most public way possible. Our social circle was tight-knit, and news traveled fast. I knew that once the truth was out, their reputations would be in tatters. The first step was to call a meeting with our closest friends. I told them I had something important to share and asked them to come to Lily's house. The curiosity and concern in their eyes were evident as they arrived, one by one. Thank you all for coming, I said, my voice steady. I have something to tell you, something that's going to change everything. I took a deep breath, my heart pounding in my chest. Tom has been having an affair with Sarah. They've been lying to me, betraying me for who knows how long. The room erupted in gasps and exclamations of shock. Our friends looked at each other, disbelief written on their faces. Are you serious? Mark, one of our closest friends, asked, his voice filled with anger. Yes, I said, my voice shaking. I have proof. Receipts, emails, messages. They thought they could get away with it, but they were wrong. I showed them the evidence their expressions shifting from shock to anger as they saw the undeniable proof of the affair. The betrayal cut deep, not just for me, but for all of us. We had been a close-knit group, and Tom and Sarah's actions had shattered the trust we had in each other. We need to do something, Lily said, her voice filled with determination. They can't get away with this. We will, I said, my voice steady. I'm planning a party, a celebration of sorts, and at that party, I'm going to expose them. They think they can hide, but I'm going to show them they can't. The plan was set. The date was chosen. It was time to take back control and show Tom and Sarah that they couldn't destroy me. As the days turned into weeks, my resolve grew stronger. The pain of Tom and Sarah's betrayal was still raw, but it fueled my determination. I was going to expose them, to make sure everyone knew what they had done. They had shattered my trust, my heart, and my life, but I wasn't going to let them get away with it. With Lily by my side, I threw myself into planning the party. It had to be perfect, a night they would never forget. I wanted to create a setting so beautiful, so serene, that the shock of the revelation would be even more profound. We chose a beautiful venue on the outskirts of town, a charming estate with sprawling gardens and a picturesque lake. It was the kind of place that screamed romance and celebration, a stark contrast to the betrayal I was about to unveil. The guest list was carefully curated. I invited all our closest friends as well as some of Tom and Sarah's colleagues. The goal was to ensure that the news of their affair spread far and wide. I wanted everyone to see their true colors. Lily and I spent hours planning every detail. The menu, the decorations, the music, everything had to be perfect. It was therapeutic in a way, focusing on the logistics and the aesthetics, giving me something to control amidst the chaos of my emotions. One evening as we sat surrounded by planning materials, Lily looked at me with concern. Are you sure about this, Claire? This is going to be huge. I nodded, 
my eyes steely with determination. They deserve this, Lily. They need to be held accountable for what they've done. I can't just let them walk away unscathed. She sighed, nodding in agreement. All right, let's make sure it's a night they'll never forget. As the date of the party approached, I could feel the tension building. Tom and I barely spoke, existing in a strained silence. He was still trying to make amends, but I wasn't ready to hear it. I was focused on one thing, revenge. Sarah, on the other hand, had been conspicuously absent. She must have sensed that something was brewing, but she hadn't reached out since our confrontation. That suited me just fine. I wanted her to walk into the party unsuspecting, to feel the full impact of the betrayal she had orchestrated. The night before the party, I lay in bed, unable to sleep. My mind raced with thoughts of what was to come. I felt a mix of anticipation and dread, knowing that once I set my plan in motion, there would be no turning back. The day of the party dawned bright and clear, a perfect backdrop for the chaos I was about to unleash. I spent the morning making final preparations, double-checking every detail. By the time the guests started to arrive, I was a bundle of nerves, but I forced myself to smile and greet them warmly. The estate looked stunning, the gardens filled with twinkling lights and elegant decorations. The air was filled with the sound of laughter and music, a stark contrast to the tension simmering beneath the surface. Tom arrived looking handsome in his suit, but there was a tension in his eyes. He greeted the guests with forced cheerfulness, his gaze flickering to me with a mixture of hope and fear. Sarah arrived soon after, her smile bright but strained. She avoided looking directly at me, but I could see the unease in her eyes. As the night progressed, I mingled with the guests, my heart pounding in my chest. The time was drawing near. I could feel the weight of the truth pressing down on me, the need to expose their betrayal overwhelming. Finally, as the evening reached its peak, I made my move. I climbed onto a small stage we had set up for speeches and called for everyone's attention. The room fell silent, all eyes turning to me. Thank you all for coming tonight, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. This night is meant to be a celebration of love and friendship, but it's also a night for truth. I saw Tom and Sarah exchange worried glances, but I pressed on. I've always believed that honesty and trust are the foundations of any relationship, but recently, I've learned that not everyone shares those values. I paused, letting my words sink in. The guests looked confused, their curiosity piqued. Tonight, I need to share a truth that has been hidden for too long, a truth about betrayal and deceit. I took a deep breath, feeling the weight of the moment. Tom, Sarah, I know about your affair. I know about the lies, the secrets, the betrayal, and now so does everyone else. The room erupted in gasps and whispers, the shockwave of my words rippling through the crowd. Tom's face went pale, his eyes wide with panic. Sarah looked like she had been slapped, her mouth opening and closing in stunned silence. I felt a rush of satisfaction, a sense of vindication. You thought you could betray me and get away with it, but you were wrong. I won't be your victim. I won't let you destroy me. Tom tried to step forward, his voice trembling. Claire, please, let me explain. There's nothing to explain, I cut him off, my voice cold. You made your choices. Now you have to live with the consequences. Sarah finally found her voice, her eyes filled with tears. Claire, I'm so sorry. I never meant to hurt you. Save it, Sarah, I said, my anger boiling over. You both knew exactly what you were doing, and now everyone knows what kind of people you really are. The guests looked on, their expressions a mix of shock, sympathy, and anger. The betrayal cut deep, not just for me, but for all of us. Tom and Sarah had shattered the trust that bound us together, and now they were facing the fallout. As I stepped down from the stage, I felt a sense of release. The truth was out, and the weight of the secret lifted from my shoulders. I had taken control of my life, reclaiming my power from those who had tried to take it from me. Lily was by my side in an instant, her eyes shining with pride. You did it, Claire. You showed them they can't mess with you. I nodded, feeling a mix of exhaustion and triumph. It's over, Lily. I can finally move on. The party continued, but the atmosphere had shifted. Tom and Sarah were pariahs, their betrayal laid bare for all to see. I watched as they tried to explain themselves to our friends, their excuses falling on deaf ears. I felt a strange sense of peace as I mingled with the guests, accepting their support and sympathy. I knew that moving on wouldn't be easy, but I was ready to face the future with strength and determination. 
As the night drew to a close, I stood by the lake, watching the reflections of the lights on the water. Lily joined me, her presence a comforting reminder of the support I had. What now? She asked, her voice soft. Now I rebuild, I said, my voice steady. I focus on myself, on my future. I won't let them destroy me. Lily nodded, her eyes filled with determination. And I'll be with you every step of the way. As we stood together, I felt a sense of hope. The road ahead would be challenging, but I knew I wasn't alone. I had the strength to move forward, to reclaim my life from the ashes of betrayal. The morning after the party, I woke up with a strange sense of peace. The revelation, the confrontation, the drama, it was all behind me now. But with that peace came a new challenge, rebuilding my life from the wreckage of betrayal. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I was determined to take control of my destiny. Tom tried reaching out several times, but I ignored his calls and messages. I needed space to heal, and hearing his voice would only reopen the wounds. Sarah, too, had made a few half-hearted attempts to apologize, but I wasn't ready to hear her excuses. I decided to focus on myself, to find strength in my own resilience. Lily continued to be my rock. She encouraged me to get out of the house, to do things that brought me joy. We spent weekends hiking, exploring new cafes, and even taking a pottery class together. Slowly, I started to feel like myself again, the pain of betrayal beginning to fade. One afternoon, while browsing a local bookstore, I ran into someone unexpected. Jake, an old friend from college, was there, flipping through a travel guide. We had lost touch over the years, but seeing his familiar face brought a rush of memories. Claire, is that you? He asked, his face lighting up with a smile. Jake, it's been ages, I replied, feeling a genuine sense of happiness. We caught up over coffee, sharing stories of our lives since college. Jake had traveled extensively, working as a freelance photographer, capturing the beauty of the world. His passion for his work was infectious, and I found myself inspired by his stories. So, how have you been? Jake asked, his eyes filled with genuine curiosity. I hesitated, unsure of how much to share, but something about Jake's presence made me feel safe. It's been a rough few months, I admitted. Tom and I, we split up. He was having an affair with my best friend. Jake's expression shifted to one of concern and empathy. I'm so sorry, Claire. That's awful. How are you holding up? I shrugged, feeling a mix of vulnerability and strength. It's been tough, but I'm getting through it. I'm trying to focus on myself, to rebuild. Jake nodded, his eyes thoughtful. If you ever need to talk or just hang out, I'm here. And if you ever want to get away for a bit, I've got a cabin in the mountains. It's a great place to clear your head. His offer was tempting. A getaway sounded like exactly what I needed. Thanks, Jake. I might take you up on that. Over the next few weeks, Jake and I reconnected, our friendship rekindling with ease. He was a calming presence, a reminder of the person I used to be before betrayal and heartbreak. We spent hours talking, laughing, and rediscovering the bond we had shared in college. One weekend, I decided to take Jake up on his offer. We packed our bags and headed to his cabin in the mountains, a secluded retreat surrounded by nature. The fresh air and serene landscape were a balm for my soul, and I felt a sense of peace I hadn't experienced in months. As we hiked through the woods, Jake shared stories of his travels, painting vivid pictures of the places he had seen. His passion for life was infectious, and I found myself inspired by his zest for adventure. There's so much out there, Jake said, his eyes sparkling with excitement. So many places to see, experiences to have. Life is too short to stay stuck in the past. His words resonated deeply with me. I realized that I had been so focused on the betrayal, on the pain, that I had forgotten about the possibilities that lay ahead. It was time to let go, to embrace the future with open arms. One evening, as we sat by the fireplace, Jake turned to me with a serious expression. Claire, have you ever thought about what you want to do next? What's your dream? The question caught me off guard. I'd been so consumed by the drama of my personal life that I hadn't taken the time to think about my own aspirations. I'm not sure, I admitted. I used to have so many dreams, but they got lost along the way. Jake smiled, his eyes filled with warmth. It's never too late to find them again, you're stronger than you know, Claire. You can do anything you set your mind to. His words were a turning point for me. I realized that I had the power to shape my own destiny, to pursue my dreams and create a life that brought me joy. With Jake's encouragement, I started to explore new possibilities, 
I began volunteering at a local animal shelter, a cause that had always been close to my heart. Working with the animals brought a sense of fulfillment and purpose, and I found solace in their unconditional love. I also started taking photography classes, inspired by Jake's passion for capturing the beauty of the world. As I immersed myself in these new pursuits, I felt a sense of renewal. The pain of betrayal was still there, but it no longer defined me. I was discovering new strengths, new passions, and new dreams. My friendship with Jake continued to deepen, and I found myself drawn to him in ways I hadn't expected. He was kind, supportive, and genuinely cared about my well-being. Our bond grew stronger with each passing day, and I began to wonder if there could be something more between us. One evening, as we watched the sunset from the cabin's porch, Jake turned to me with a serious expression. Claire, there's something I need to tell you. My heart skipped a beat, a mix of anticipation and nervousness flooding my senses. What is it, Jake? He took a deep breath, his eyes locking onto mine. I've been falling for you, Claire. These past few weeks have been amazing, and I can't imagine my life without you. I know you've been through a lot, but I want to be there for you, to support you in whatever comes next. Tears welled up in my eyes, but this time they were tears of joy. Jake, I don't know what to say. You've been my rock through all of this. I never expected to find love again, but you've shown me that it's possible. We kissed, a gentle, tender kiss that felt like a promise of new beginnings. In that moment, I knew that I had found something special, something worth fighting for. As the weeks turned into months, Jake and I built a life together filled with love, laughter, and adventure. We traveled, explored new places, and created memories that would last a lifetime. I continued to pursue my passions, finding fulfillment in my work with animals and my photography. Tom and Sarah faded into the background, their betrayal a distant memory. I had moved on, found new strength, and discovered a love that was true and unwavering. One evening as we sat by the lake watching the sunset, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, have you ever thought about writing a book? The idea took me by surprise. A book? About what? About your journey, he said, his eyes filled with encouragement. Everything you've been through, the lessons you've learned, the strength you've found, your story could inspire so many people. I considered his words, feeling a spark of excitement. You know, I think I might like that. With Jake's support, I began to write, pouring my heart and soul into the pages. It was a cathartic process, a way to make sense of the past and to celebrate the present. My story was one of resilience, of finding strength in the face of betrayal, and of discovering the power of love. As I worked on the book, life continued to unfold in beautiful and unexpected ways. Jake and I faced challenges, but we faced them together, our bond growing stronger with each passing day. We celebrated the milestones, cherished the quiet moments, and found joy in the journey. One evening, as we sat on the porch watching the sunset, I turned to Jake, my heart overflowing with love and gratitude. Thank you, I said, my voice filled with emotion. For what? he asked, his eyes crinkling with a smile. For everything, I replied. For being my rock, my partner, my love. For helping me find my way back to happiness. He kissed me gently his touch a reminder of the love that had brought us together. Thank you, Claire, for being you, for loving me, and for building this beautiful life with me. As we watched the sun dip below the horizon, I felt a sense of completeness, a belief that our journey was only just beginning. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew we would face them together, with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. Jake and I settled into a comfortable rhythm, our lives intertwined in a way that felt natural and right. We had found love in the aftermath of betrayal, and our bond only grew stronger with each passing day. Life was good, filled with laughter, shared dreams, and the promise of new adventures. One morning, as we sipped coffee on the porch of our mountain cabin, Jake surprised me with an idea that would change our lives. Claire, he began, his eyes twinkling with excitement. I've been thinking about something. What's that? I asked, curious about the spark in his eyes. I want to start a business together, he said. Something that's a combination of our passions. How about a retreat center? A place where people can come to heal, find peace, and rediscover themselves. You could run workshops on photography and animal therapy, and I could teach wilderness survival and nature photography. The idea took me by surprise, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. We both loved helping others and being surrounded by nature. Jake, that sounds amazing, I said, 
feeling a surge of excitement. I love the idea. Let's do it. Over the next few months, we threw ourselves into planning our retreat center. We found a beautiful piece of land nestled in the mountains, perfect for our vision. It was a sprawling estate with a large main lodge, several cozy cabins, and plenty of open space for outdoor activities. The property even had a small lake, adding to its serene and picturesque charm. We named our retreat Serenity Springs, and it quickly became a labor of love. We worked tirelessly to renovate the cabins, transform the main lodge into a welcoming space, and create trails and outdoor areas for our guests to enjoy. We poured our hearts into every detail, wanting to create a haven where people could escape the chaos of their lives and find solace in nature. As we worked on the retreat, we also focused on building our future together. One evening while we were taking a break from renovations, Jake turned to me with a serious expression. Claire, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. My heart skipped a beat, sensing the significance of the moment. What is it, Jake? He took my hand, his eyes filled with love and determination. I love you more than anything in this world. You've brought so much joy and purpose into my life, and I can't imagine spending it with anyone else. Will you marry me? Tears welled up in my eyes as I looked into his sincere gaze. Yes, Jake, I said, my voice trembling with emotion. Yes, I will marry you. We celebrated our engagement with a quiet dinner by the lake, just the two of us. The sky was painted in hues of pink and orange as the sun set, and we talked about our future, our dreams, and the life we were building together. Our wedding was a small, intimate affair held at Serenity Springs. Surrounded by the beauty of nature and our closest friends, we exchanged vows that reflected our journey of love and resilience. The ceremony was filled with laughter, tears, and heartfelt promises. It was a day of pure joy a testament to the strength of our love and the new beginnings we had found in each other. As we settled into married life, Serenity Springs began to flourish. We welcomed our first guests, a group of women looking for a retreat to reconnect with themselves and find healing. The feedback was overwhelmingly positive, and we quickly gained a reputation as a sanctuary for those seeking peace and transformation. One day, while running a photography workshop, I met a woman named Laura. She was going through a difficult divorce and had come to Serenity Springs to find solace and clarity. We bonded over our shared experiences of betrayal and heartbreak, and I found myself offering her the same support and encouragement that Jake had given me. You're stronger than you know, Laura, I said, sitting with her by the lake. This is just a chapter in your story, not the end. You have the power to create a new beginning. She smiled, her eyes filled with gratitude. Thank you, Claire. You've given me hope. This place is truly magical. As the months passed, Serenity Springs continued to grow and so did our family. Jake and I welcomed a baby girl, whom we named Lily after my dear friend. She brought an added layer of joy and fulfillment to our lives, and we loved watching her explore the world around her with wide-eyed wonder. Balancing parenthood and running the retreat was challenging, but we embraced every moment. Our guests often became like extended family, and it was not uncommon to find Lily toddling around, bringing smiles to everyone's faces. She became a symbol of the new beginnings and the beauty that could arise from life's unexpected twists and turns. One evening, as we sat by the fireplace in the main lodge, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, do you ever think about the people who come here? About the impact we're having on their lives? I nodded, feeling a deep sense of fulfillment. Yes, all the time. It's incredible to see the transformations, to witness people finding their strength and rediscovering themselves. He smiled, his eyes reflecting the same sense of purpose. We've created something truly special here, and it's all because of you. Your strength, your resilience, your love, they're the heart of this place. Tears welled up in my eyes as I leaned into him. Thank you, Jake. But it's not just me, it's us. We did this together. As we sat there, surrounded by the warmth of the fire and the love that filled the room, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. Life had taken us on a journey of heartbreak and betrayal, but it had also led us to this beautiful new beginning. We had found love, built a life filled with purpose, and created a haven where others could find healing and transformation. One day, as I was working in the garden, tending to the flowers that had become a symbol of growth and renewal, I heard a voice behind me. Claire? I turned to see Sarah standing there, her eyes filled with regret and longing. Sarah, I said, feeling a mix of emotions. I heard about what you've been doing here. 
she said, her voice trembling. I needed to see it for myself, and I needed to apologize. I took a deep breath, the memories of our friendship and betrayal flooding back. Why now, Sarah? She looked down, her shoulders slumping. I've been through a lot since everything happened. I've had time to reflect to understand the pain I caused, and I want to make amends. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I needed to try. I studied her face, seeing the sincerity and the weight of her remorse. Sarah, what you did hurt me deeply. It took me a long time to heal, to rebuild my life. But I've found peace and I've found happiness. I don't know if I can fully forgive you, but I can let go of the anger. Tears streamed down her face as she nodded. Thank you, Claire. That means more than you know. We stood there in silence, the past lingering between us but no longer holding us captive. It was a moment of closure, a step toward healing for both of us. As Sarah left, I felt a sense of release. The wounds of the past had finally begun to heal, and I was free to fully embrace the future. Jake joined me in the garden, wrapping his arms around me. Are you okay? He asked softly. I nodded, feeling a sense of peace. Yes, I think I am. As we watched the sunset together, I knew that our journey was far from over. There would be new challenges, new joys, and new adventures. But with Jake by my side, I was ready to face whatever came our way. Together, we had built a life filled with love, resilience, and the promise of endless possibilities. Life at Serenity Springs was a blend of hard work and fulfilling rewards. The retreat had become a sanctuary, not only for our guests, but also for us. Our daughter Lily grew up surrounded by nature, her laughter echoing through the halls of the lodge and the paths of the gardens. Jake and I continued to pour our hearts into the retreat, watching with pride as it flourished and touched the lives of many. One spring morning as we were having breakfast on the porch, Jake looked at me with that familiar spark of excitement in his eyes. Claire, I've been thinking about expanding Serenity Springs. I raised an eyebrow, intrigued. Oh, what do you have in mind? Well, he began, his eyes twinkling. We've done an amazing job with the retreat, but I think we can offer even more. What if we had a wellness center? We could have yoga classes, meditation sessions, and even spa treatments. A place where people can come to not only find peace, but also rejuvenate their bodies and minds. The idea was brilliant, and I felt a surge of excitement. I love it, Jake. It sounds perfect. Let's do it. We spent the next few months planning and building the wellness center. It was a challenging endeavor, but we were fueled by our shared vision and the support of our growing community. The new center included a beautiful yoga studio with large windows overlooking the mountains, a serene meditation garden, and a cozy spa offering massages and holistic treatments. The grand opening of the wellness center was a huge success. We invited our past guests and friends, and the turnout was incredible. People were excited about the new offerings, and the feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Serenity Springs had become a beacon of hope and healing, and we couldn't have been prouder. As our business thrived, so did our family. Lily was now four years old, and her curiosity and adventurous spirit kept us on our toes. She loved exploring the gardens, helping us with the animals, and making friends with the guests. Her presence brought even more joy to our lives, and we cherished every moment with her. One evening after a particularly busy day at the retreat, I found myself feeling unusually tired and nauseous. At first, I attributed it to stress and exhaustion, but when the symptoms persisted, I decided to take a pregnancy test. As I waited for the results, my heart raced with a mix of anticipation and anxiety. When the test showed a positive result, I felt a wave of emotions, joy, excitement, and a hint of nervousness. I couldn't wait to share the news with Jake. That evening, as we sat by the fireplace, I took his hand in mine. Jake, there's something I need to tell you. He looked at me, his eyes filled with concern. What is it, Claire? Are you okay? I smiled, tears of happiness filling my eyes. I'm more than okay, we're going to have another baby. His face lit up with joy and he pulled me into a tight embrace. That's amazing news, Claire. I can't believe it. Lily is going to be a big sister. We spent the rest of the evening talking about our hopes and dreams for our growing family. The news of our pregnancy brought a new sense of excitement and purpose to our lives. We were ready to embrace the challenges and joys of parenthood once again. As my pregnancy progressed, we made sure to involve Lily in the preparations for her sibling's arrival. She was thrilled at the prospect of becoming a big sister and eagerly helped us set up the nursery. Her excitement was contagious, and it brought us even closer as a family. 
One day while we were working in the garden, Lily looked up at me with her big, innocent eyes. Mommy, do you think the baby will like the flowers? I smiled, feeling a rush of love for my daughter. I'm sure the baby will love the flowers, just like you do. As we prepared for the arrival of our new baby, life at Serenity Springs continued to thrive. The Wellness Center attracted more guests, and we added new programs and activities to keep things fresh and exciting. We even started offering retreats specifically for families, allowing parents and children to bond and heal together. One afternoon while leading a photography workshop, I met a young woman named Emily. She was quiet and reserved, but her eyes held a depth of emotion that drew me in. As we talked, she shared her story. A recent breakup had left her feeling lost and unsure of herself. Photography has always been my passion, she said, her voice trembling. But after the breakup, I felt like I lost my way. I came here hoping to find some clarity. I felt a deep connection to her story, remembering my own journey of healing and self-discovery. Emily, you're not alone. We all have moments of doubt and pain, but it's through those experiences that we find our strength. You're here now, and that's the first step. Over the next few days, Emily and I grew closer. She poured her heart into her photography, capturing the beauty of Serenity Springs and the emotions it evoked. Her talent was undeniable, and I encouraged her to pursue her passion wholeheartedly. You're an amazing photographer, Emily, I said one evening as we reviewed her work. You have a unique perspective and a gift for capturing the essence of a moment. Don't let anyone or anything hold you back. Tears filled her eyes as she hugged me. Thank you, Claire. You've given me hope and a sense of purpose. I can't thank you enough. Emily's transformation was a testament to the power of Serenity Springs. It was a place where people could heal, find their passions, and rediscover themselves. And it was a reminder of why Jake and I had created this haven in the first place. As my due date approached, the anticipation of our baby's arrival grew. Jake and I made sure to cherish the quiet moments, knowing that our lives were about to change once again. One evening, as we sat on the porch watching the stars, he turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, have you ever thought about writing another book? He asked. I looked at him surprised. Another book? About what? About Serenity Springs, he said, his eyes filled with excitement. About the people who come here, their stories, and the transformations they experience. You've already inspired so many with your first book. This could reach even more people. The idea sparked a sense of excitement within me. Serenity Springs was a place of healing and hope, and sharing the stories of our guests could inspire others to seek their own paths to healing. I love the idea, Jake. Let's do it. With Jake's support, I began to work on the book, interviewing guests and capturing their stories. It was a deeply fulfilling project, and it reminded me of the incredible impact Serenity Springs had on people's lives. As I delved into the stories, I felt a renewed sense of purpose and gratitude. The journey that had brought us to this point was filled with twists and turns, but it had led us to a place of love, healing, and new beginnings. One evening, as I was working on the book, I felt the first signs of labor. I called out to Jake, and he rushed to my side, his eyes filled with excitement and concern. It's time. I said, smiling through the contractions. We made our way to the hospital, the anticipation and excitement building with each passing moment. The labor was intense, but Jake was by my side, holding my hand and offering words of encouragement. As the hours passed, our baby finally arrived, a beautiful, healthy boy. Tears of joy streamed down my face as I held our son for the first time. Welcome to the world, little one, I whispered, my heart overflowing with love. Jake leaned in, his eyes filled with wonder. He's perfect, Claire, just like you. As we brought our son home, Lily was overjoyed to meet her baby brother. She took her role as a big sister seriously, showering him with love and affection. Our family felt complete, and we embraced the new challenges and joys that parenthood brought. Life at Serenity Springs continued to thrive, and our family grew stronger with each passing day. The retreat had become a sanctuary for so many and we were grateful for the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. As the years went by, we faced new challenges and celebrated new milestones. Our children grew, and our love for each other deepened. We continued to build a life filled with purpose, resilience, and joy. One evening as we sat by the lake watching the sunset, I turned to Jake, my heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, I said, my voice filled with emotion. For what? he asked, his eyes crinkling with a smile. For everything, I replied. 
for being my partner, my rock, my love, for helping me find my way back to happiness. He kissed me gently, his touch a reminder of the love that had brought us together. Thank you, Claire, for being you, for loving me and for building this beautiful life with me. As we watched the sun dip below the horizon, I felt a sense of completeness, a belief that our journey was only just beginning. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew we would face them together, with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. The next few years were a whirlwind of growth and new experiences. Serenity Springs flourished, becoming a well-known retreat center renowned for its healing atmosphere and transformative programs. Our children, Lily and Benjamin, grew up in this nurturing environment, surrounded by love, nature, and a community of supportive people. One summer, we decided to take a family vacation to Europe. It was a chance to explore new places, experience different cultures, and create lasting memories. We visited iconic cities like Paris, Rome, and Barcelona, and spent time in quaint villages that seemed to have stepped out of a storybook. One evening, as we sat at a charming cafe in Paris, Jake looked at me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, have you ever thought about expanding Serenity Springs internationally? The idea took me by surprise. You mean open a retreat center in Europe? Yes, he said, his eyes shining with excitement. We've created something incredible at Serenity Springs. Imagine what we could do if we brought that vision to other parts of the world. The thought of expanding our retreat internationally was both thrilling and daunting, but I couldn't deny the appeal. It's an amazing idea, Jake, but it would be a huge undertaking. I know, he said, taking my hand, but we can do it together. We've already built something beautiful. This could be our next adventure. We spent the rest of the trip discussing the possibilities, sketching out ideas and dreaming about the future. By the time we returned home, we were determined to make our vision a reality. Back at Serenity Springs, we began the process of researching potential locations, meeting with investors, and planning the expansion. It was a challenging endeavor, but our excitement and passion kept us motivated. One day, as I was working in the garden, Lily ran up to me, her face flushed with excitement. Mommy, look what I found! She held out a small, colorful stone, its surface glistening in the sunlight. It's beautiful, Lily, I said, admiring her find. Where did you get it? By the lake, she said, beaming with pride. I think it's a sign, a good luck charm for our new retreat. I smiled, touched by her innocence and enthusiasm. Maybe it is, sweetheart, maybe it is. As we prepared for the international expansion, we faced unexpected challenges. One evening, after a long day of meetings and planning, Jake and I sat on the porch, reflecting on the obstacles ahead. This is harder than I thought it would be, I admitted, feeling the weight of the responsibility. I know, Jake said, his voice gentle, but we knew it wouldn't be easy, and we have each other. We'll get through this. His words were a reminder of the strength and resilience we had always found in each other. No matter how tough things got, we faced them together. Our first breakthrough came when we found a beautiful estate in Tuscany, nestled among rolling hills and vineyards. It was the perfect location for our new retreat, and we knew it was meant to be. We traveled to Italy to oversee the renovations and to begin building our team. It was a labor of love, and as we watched the transformation take place, we felt a deep sense of pride and accomplishment. The grand opening of Serenity Springs, Tuscany was a momentous occasion. We invited guests from all over the world, including some of our most loyal supporters from the original Serenity Springs. The response was overwhelmingly positive, and we knew we had created something special. As we settled into our new routine, balancing the management of both retreats and raising our children, life took on a new rhythm. We faced new challenges, but also new joys. Watching Lily and Benjamin thrive in this environment was a constant source of happiness. One evening after a particularly hectic day, Jake and I sat on the terrace of our Tuscan villa, sipping wine and enjoying the sunset. We did it, Claire, he said, his voice filled with awe. We really did it. I smiled, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. Yes, we did, and I couldn't have done it without you. He leaned in, kissing me gently. I love you, Claire. Thank you for believing in us. I love you too, Jake, and thank you for dreaming big. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the vineyards, I felt a sense of completeness. Our journey had taken us to uncharted territories, but we had faced every challenge with love, resilience, and an unwavering bond. Back in Colorado, 
we continued to nurture the original Serenity Springs, ensuring it remained a haven of healing and transformation. The balance between managing two retreats and raising our family was challenging, but it also brought a sense of fulfillment. One afternoon while leading a nature photography workshop, I met a woman named Isabella. She was a single mother who had recently lost her job and was struggling to find her footing. Her passion for photography was evident, but so was her uncertainty about the future. Photography has always been my escape, she said, her voice filled with emotion. But I don't know how to turn it into something more. I felt a deep connection to her story, remembering my own journey of rediscovery. Isabella, you have a gift. Don't let fear hold you back. This place is about healing and finding your path. Trust yourself and take that leap. Over the course of the workshop, Isabella's confidence grew, and her photos captured the essence of Serenity Springs. By the end of her stay, she had decided to pursue photography full-time and even began planning her own exhibitions. Seeing Isabella's transformation was a reminder of the impact we could have on people's lives. Serenity Springs was more than just a retreat. It was a place where people found themselves, rediscovered their passions, and embraced new beginnings. As our family grew and our retreats flourished, we continued to face new challenges and adventures. One summer, we decided to embark on a family road trip across the United States, visiting national parks and historical landmarks. It was a chance to reconnect, create new memories, and explore the beauty of our country. One evening, as we camped under the stars in Yellowstone National Park, Lily looked up at the sky, her eyes wide with wonder. Mommy, Daddy, do you think there are other places out there like Serenity Springs? Jake and I exchanged a thoughtful glance. There might be, sweetheart, Jake said. But what's important is that we created something special, a place where people can heal and find themselves. Lily smiled, snuggling closer to us. I'm glad we did. As we watched the stars, I felt a deep sense of contentment. Our journey had taken us to uncharted territories, but we had navigated them with love, resilience, and an unwavering bond. And I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, with the same strength and determination that had carried us through so much. Back at Serenity Springs, we continued to innovate and expand our programs. We introduced new workshops, collaborated with experts in various fields, and created specialized retreats for different needs. Our community grew, and we were grateful for the opportunity to make a positive impact on so many lives. One day, as I was working in my office, I received an unexpected email from a major publishing house. They had heard about Serenity Springs and were interested in publishing a book about our journey and the transformations that took place at our retreats. The offer was a dream come true, and I shared the news with Jake and the kids. This is amazing, Claire, Jake said, his eyes filled with pride. You deserve this. Lily and Benjamin were equally excited, their eyes shining with anticipation. Mommy, can we help with the book? Lily asked. Of course, I said, smiling. This is our story, and I want to share it with the world. With the support of my family, I began working on the book, capturing the essence of Serenity Springs and the incredible stories of transformation that had taken place. It was a deeply personal and fulfilling project, and I poured my heart into every page. As the book took shape, I felt a sense of pride and accomplishment. Our journey had been filled with twists and turns, but it had led us to a place of love, healing, and new beginnings and now we had the opportunity to inspire others with our story. One evening, as we sat by the lake watching the sunset, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, do you ever think about the future? About what's next for us? I smiled, feeling a sense of excitement and anticipation. I think the future is full of possibilities, I said, my voice filled with hope, and whatever comes next, I know well, face it together. As we watched the sun dip below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the lake, I felt a sense of completeness. Our journey was far from over, but I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together, with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. Life at Serenity Springs continued to thrive, and our international expansion was a success. Our Tuscany retreat had quickly become a beloved destination, drawing visitors from all over the world. Jake and I juggled the responsibilities of managing both retreats while raising our children, Lily and Benjamin. Every day was a new adventure, and we cherished the chaos and joy that filled our lives. One crisp autumn morning as we were preparing breakfast, Jake walked into the kitchen with a look of excitement. 
Claire, I just got a call from a prominent wellness magazine. They want to feature Serenity Springs in a cover story. I felt a rush of pride and excitement. That's incredible, Jake. This could bring so much more attention to what we've created. I know, he said, his eyes shining with enthusiasm. They want to send a journalist and a photographer to spend a week at each retreat, capturing the essence of what we do. The idea of having our story told on such a large platform was exhilarating. We agreed to the plan, and within a few weeks, the journalist Rachel and the photographer Mark arrived at our Colorado retreat. Rachel was a warm and engaging woman, genuinely interested in the stories of our guests and the journey that had led us to create Serenity Springs. Mark, with his keen eye for detail, captured the beauty and tranquility of the retreat with stunning photographs. During their stay, Rachel and Mark immersed themselves in the daily activities, participating in yoga classes, nature walks, and workshops. They interviewed guests, capturing the transformative experiences that had become the hallmark of Serenity Springs. One evening, as we sat around a bonfire, Rachel turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, what inspired you to create Serenity Springs? What drives you to continue expanding and helping others? I took a deep breath, reflecting on the journey that had brought us here. It all started with my own need for healing. I went through a very difficult time, and it was through that experience that I realized the importance of having a safe space to heal and rediscover oneself. Jake and I wanted to create that space for others, to offer a sanctuary where people could find peace and transformation. Rachel nodded, her eyes filled with understanding. Your story is incredibly inspiring. I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people. The week flew by, and soon it was time for Rachel and Mark to head to our Tuscany retreat. They promised to stay in touch and keep us updated on the progress of the article. As life returned to its usual rhythm, we continued to focus on our family and the retreats. Lily and Benjamin were growing up fast, their personalities blossoming in the nurturing environment of Serenity Springs. Lily, with her love for nature and animals, had become a little caretaker, often helping with the garden and the animals. Benjamin, with his boundless energy and curiosity, was always exploring and discovering new things. One afternoon, as I was working in my office, Lily came running in, her face flushed with excitement. Mommy, there's someone here to see you. She says she's an old friend. Curious, I followed Lily to the main lodge, where I found Emily waiting. She looked different, more confident, more at peace. It had been years since our last conversation, and I felt a mix of emotions seeing her again. Claire, she said, her voice filled with warmth. It's so good to see you. Emily, I replied, feeling a wave of nostalgia. What brings you here? I heard about Serenity Springs and the amazing work you're doing. I wanted to see it for myself, and I wanted to thank you. Her words took me by surprise. Thank me? For what? For forgiving me, for giving me a chance to heal. I know I hurt you deeply, and I can never undo that. But your forgiveness allowed me to find my own path to healing. I've been volunteering at a women's shelter, helping others who have gone through similar experiences. It's been incredibly fulfilling. I felt a sense of closure and peace hearing her words. I'm glad to hear that, Emily. I'm glad you're doing well. We spent the afternoon catching up, sharing stories of our journeys and the lessons we had learned along the way. It was a reminder that forgiveness and healing could lead to new beginnings and unexpected connections. As the months passed, the magazine article was published, and the response was overwhelming. Serenity Springs received a surge of interest, and our retreats were fully booked for months in advance. We were grateful for the recognition and the opportunity to reach more people in need of healing and transformation. One evening, as Jake and I were sitting on the porch watching the sunset, he turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, have you ever thought about what's next for us? I smiled, feeling a sense of excitement and anticipation. I think the future is full of possibilities. We've built something incredible and there's so much more we can do. I agree, he said, taking my hand and I think it's time for another adventure. The idea of embarking on a new journey was exhilarating. We began brainstorming ideas for further expansion, considering locations in Asia and South America. Our vision was to create a global network of retreats, each offering the same transformative experiences and healing atmosphere that had made Serenity Springs so special. As we planned our next steps, life continued to bring new surprises. One day, while leading a meditation session, I felt a sharp pain in my side. Concerned, I scheduled a doctor's appointment, and after a series of tests, I received unexpected news. I was pregnant. The news brought a mix of emotions, 
joy, excitement, and a hint of nervousness. Jake and I had always talked about having another child, but we hadn't expected it to happen now. As I shared the news with Jake, his face lit up with happiness. This is amazing, Claire, he said, wrapping me in a hug. We're going to have another baby. Lily and Benjamin were thrilled at the prospect of a new sibling, and their excitement was infectious. We prepared for the arrival of our new family member, balancing the demands of the retreats with the joys and challenges of pregnancy. As my due date approached, we decided to take a short break from the retreats to focus on our family. We spent time together, enjoying the simple moments and cherishing the anticipation of our new addition. On a warm summer evening, our baby girl Sophie was born. She was perfect, and we felt a profound sense of gratitude and completeness. Our family had grown, and so had our love. As we settled into life with a newborn, we continued to nurture Serenity Springs and our vision for the future. We faced new challenges, but we faced them together, with the same strength and resilience that had carried us through so much. One day, as we were walking through the gardens, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, do you ever think about writing another book, this time about our global journey and the impact of Serenity Springs around the world? The idea sparked a sense of excitement within me. I love the idea, Jake. It could be a way to share our vision and inspire others to create their own sanctuaries of healing. With Jake's support, I began working on the book, capturing the stories of our global expansion and the incredible transformations that had taken place at our retreats. It was a deeply fulfilling project, and I poured my heart into every page. As the book took shape, I felt a renewed sense of purpose and gratitude. Our journey had been filled with twists and turns but it had led us to a place of love, healing, and new beginnings, and now we had the opportunity to inspire others with our story. One evening, as we sat by the lake watching the sunset, I turned to Jake, my heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, I said, my voice filled with emotion. For what? he asked, his eyes crinkling with a smile. For everything, I replied. For being my partner, my rock, my love. For helping me find my way back to happiness. He kissed me gently, his touch a reminder of the love that had brought us together. Thank you, Claire, for being you, for loving me and for building this beautiful life with me. As we watched the sun dip below the horizon, I felt a sense of completeness, a belief that our journey was only just beginning. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew we would face them together, with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. As life at Serenity Springs continued to evolve, so did our family. Sophie grew into a lively toddler, her laughter filling the halls of our home and the retreat. Lily and Benjamin thrived, their curiosity and adventurous spirits driving them to explore the world around them. Our retreat centers in Colorado and Tuscany were thriving, and the prospect of expanding to new locations was both exciting and daunting. One autumn afternoon, as I was reviewing plans for a potential new retreat in Bali, Jake came into the office looking concerned. Claire, we need to talk. His serious tone made my heart skip a beat. What's wrong? It's about Sophie, he said, sitting down beside me. I've noticed she's been having trouble hearing us. At first I thought it was just selective hearing, but now I'm not so sure. A wave of worry washed over me. What do you mean? I think we should get her hearing tested, he said gently, just to be sure. The next day we took Sophie to a specialist. The results confirmed our fears. Sophie had a moderate hearing loss in both ears. The news was a shock, and the thought of our daughter struggling with something we couldn't easily fix was heart-wrenching. The doctor was reassuring, explaining that with the right support and intervention, Sophie could lead a full and happy life. We were determined to provide her with everything she needed, but the journey ahead was uncertain and filled with new challenges. We immediately began researching options for hearing aids and therapy. Our days were filled with appointments and consultations, and our nights with discussions about how best to support Sophie. It was a stressful time, but our love for our daughter and our commitment to her well-being kept us strong. Lily and Benjamin were incredibly supportive, helping us with Sophie and learning how to communicate with her in new ways. Their resilience and love were a source of inspiration, reminding us of the strength of our family bond. One evening, as we sat around the dinner table, Lily turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Mommy, can we learn sign language? I want to be able to talk to Sophie no matter what. Her suggestion was a light bulb moment. That's a wonderful idea, Lily. Let's all learn together. We began taking sign language classes as a family, and it quickly became a bonding experience. 
We practiced every day, turning it into a fun and educational activity. Sophie was delighted, her eyes lighting up as she saw us making the effort to communicate with her in new ways. As Sophie adjusted to her hearing aids, we saw her confidence grow. She was a bright, determined child, and her resilience inspired us all. She flourished at Serenity Springs, making friends with the guests and participating in activities with enthusiasm. Meanwhile, our plans for the Bali retreat were moving forward. We found a beautiful location overlooking the ocean, and the prospect of creating a new sanctuary in such a serene environment was exhilarating. We began assembling a team, planning the programs, and designing the spaces. The grand opening of Serenity Springs Bali was a celebration of hard work and dedication. The retreat quickly gained a reputation as a haven of tranquility and transformation, attracting guests from around the world. The beauty of the location, combined with the healing programs, created a unique and powerful experience. Back in Colorado, life continued to bring new challenges and joys. Lily and Benjamin were growing up fast, their interests and talents blossoming. Lily had developed a passion for animals and expressed a desire to become a veterinarian. Benjamin, with his love for adventure and discovery, was fascinated by science and dreamed of becoming an astronaut. One day, as we were working in the garden, Benjamin looked up at me with a determined expression. Mommy, do you think I can really become an astronaut? I smiled, feeling a surge of pride. Of course, Benjamin. You can do anything you set your mind to. Follow your dreams and work hard and you'll achieve great things. His eyes lit up with excitement. I will, Mommy, I promise. As our children pursued their passions, Jake and I continued to focus on Serenity Springs. The retreats were thriving, and the feedback from our guests was overwhelmingly positive. We were grateful for the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives and to share our vision of healing and transformation. One evening, as we sat on the porch watching the sunset, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, I've been thinking about something. What is it? I asked, curious. I want to create a scholarship program for underprivileged youth, he said, a way to give them the opportunity to experience Serenity Springs and benefit from our programs. The idea was brilliant, and I felt a surge of excitement. That's a wonderful idea, Jake. It could make such a difference in their lives. We immediately began working on the scholarship program, reaching out to schools and organizations to identify deserving candidates. The response was incredible, and we were able to welcome several young people to Serenity Springs, offering them a chance to heal, grow, and discover their potential. As we continued to expand our programs and reach new audiences, life brought unexpected surprises. One day while leading a photography workshop, I received a call from Rachel, the journalist who had featured Serenity Springs in the wellness magazine. Claire, I have some exciting news, she said. The article we published about Serenity Springs has been nominated for a prestigious journalism award. I was thrilled. That's amazing, Rachel. Congratulations. Thank you, she said. But there's more. The award ceremony is in New York City, and we'd love for you and Jake to attend as our guests. The prospect of attending the award ceremony was both exciting and nerve-wracking. It was a chance to celebrate our achievements and share our story with a wider audience. As the date of the ceremony approached, we prepared for the trip, making arrangements for the kids to stay with Lily's best friend and her family. The journey to New York was a whirlwind, filled with anticipation and excitement. The award ceremony was a glamorous affair, and we were surrounded by some of the most influential figures in journalism and wellness. When Rachel's article was announced as the winner, the room erupted in applause. It was a proud moment, and we felt honored to be part of such an incredible achievement. As we returned to our seats, Jake took my hand, his eyes shining with pride. We've come a long way, Claire, and this is just the beginning. I smiled, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. Yes, it is, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Back at Serenity Springs, life continued to bring new challenges and adventures. We faced each one with the same resilience and determination that had carried us through so much. Our family grew stronger, our retreats flourished, and we continued to make a positive impact on the lives of those who came to us for healing and transformation. One afternoon, as we were preparing for a family picnic by the lake, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, do you ever think about what legacy we want to leave for our children? The question took me by surprise, but it was something I had thought about often. I want them to know the importance of love, resilience, and giving back. 
I want them to carry on our vision of creating sanctuaries of healing and making a difference in the world. He nodded, his eyes filled with love and determination. I feel the same way, and I think we're doing just that. As we sat by the lake surrounded by our children and the beauty of Serenity Springs, I felt a profound sense of fulfillment. Our journey had been filled with twists and turns, but it had led us to a place of love, healing, and new beginnings. And I knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, we would face them together with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a golden glow over the lake, I turned to Jake, my heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, I said, my voice filled with emotion. For what? He asked, his eyes crinkling with a smile. For everything, I replied. For being my partner, my rock, my love. For helping me find my way back to happiness. He kissed me gently, his touch a reminder of the love that had brought us together. Thank you, Claire, for being you. For loving me and for building this beautiful life with me. As we watched the sunset, I felt a sense of completeness. A belief that our journey was only just beginning. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew we would face them together, with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. The years at Serenity Springs had been a beautiful journey of growth, healing, and transformation. Our family had faced many challenges, but each one had brought us closer together and made us stronger. As we entered this new chapter of our lives, we were ready to reflect on our incredible journey and look forward to the future with hope and excitement. One crisp autumn morning, as the leaves turned brilliant shades of red and gold, Jake and I sat on the porch of our Colorado retreat, sipping coffee and watching our children play in the garden. Lily was now a teenager, her passion for animals leading her to volunteer at a local veterinary clinic. Benjamin, always curious and adventurous, was excelling in his science classes and dreaming of one day exploring the stars. Sophie, with her boundless energy and infectious laughter, was thriving despite her hearing challenges, her resilience inspiring us every day. Can you believe how far we've come? Jake said, his eyes filled with wonder as he watched our children. I smiled, feeling a deep sense of gratitude. It's been an incredible journey. We've built something beautiful here, not just for us, but for so many others. He took my hand, his touch warm and reassuring. And it's only the beginning there's still so much more we can do. As we talked about our future plans, we decided it was time to revisit our roots and reconnect with the places and people who had shaped our journey. We planned a family trip back to where it all began, starting with a visit to our alma mater, where Jake and I had first met. Returning to our old college campus was a nostalgic experience. We walked hand in hand through the familiar pathways, sharing stories with our children about our time there. Lily and Benjamin were fascinated by the tales of our early days together, and Sophie enjoyed exploring the campus grounds. One evening, as we stood in front of the building where we had first met, Jake turned to me with a thoughtful expression. Claire, this place will always be special to us. It's where our journey began. I nodded, feeling a rush of memories. Yes, it is. And it's amazing to see how far we've come since then. Our next stop was the town where we had started Serenity Springs. We visited the original retreat, now thriving under the capable management of our dedicated team. The place was buzzing with activity, guests engaged in various programs and workshops, the atmosphere filled with a sense of peace and healing. As we walked through the gardens, we were greeted with smiles and warm welcomes from the staff and guests. It was heartwarming to see the positive impact Serenity Springs had on so many lives. We spent the day reconnecting with old friends, sharing stories, and celebrating the successes of the retreat. One afternoon, as we sat by the lake, I felt a sense of fulfillment wash over me. Jake, this place has grown into something beyond our wildest dreams. It's a testament to what love, resilience, and hard work can achieve. He smiled, wrapping his arm around me. It's a reflection of us, Claire. Our journey, our vision, our love. And it's something we can be proud of. Our final destination was Tuscany, where our international retreat had flourished. The beauty of the rolling hills and vineyards was breathtaking, and we were welcomed with open arms by the local team. The retreat had become a beloved destination for guests seeking tranquility and transformation, and it was fulfilling to see our vision come to life in such a stunning location. As we strolled through the vineyards, our children marveled at the scenery. 
Lily and Benjamin were inspired by the stories of the guests and the impact of the retreat, while Sophie enjoyed exploring the gardens and making new friends. One evening, as we watched the sunset over the Tuscan hills, Jake turned to me with a look of contentment. Claire, this journey has been incredible, and I couldn't have asked for a better partner. I leaned into him, feeling a deep sense of love and gratitude. Thank you, Jake, for being my rock, my love, and my partner in everything. We've created something truly special. As we returned home to Colorado, we reflected on our journey and the lessons we had learned along the way. The challenges we had faced had strengthened our bond and taught us the importance of love, resilience, and giving back. We were ready to embrace whatever the future held, knowing that we would face it together. One afternoon, as we were working in the garden, Lily came up to us with a thoughtful expression. Mom, Dad, I've been thinking about something. What's on your mind, sweetheart? I asked, curious. I want to continue what you've started, she said, her eyes filled with determination. I want to help people and make a difference, just like you have. Her words filled me with pride and joy. That's wonderful, Lily, and we will support you in every way we can. Benjamin, not to be outdone, chimed in. I want to be a part of it, too. Maybe we can combine our passions and create something new together. Jake and I exchanged a look of amazement and gratitude. Our children were carrying forward our vision, and we couldn't have been prouder. That's a fantastic idea, Jake said, and I can't wait to see what you both create. As our family continued to grow and evolve, we embraced new challenges and adventures with the same love and resilience that had carried us through so much. Serenity Springs remained a sanctuary of healing and transformation, and our legacy was being carried forward by our children. One evening, as we sat by the lake watching the stars, I turned to Jake, my heart overflowing with gratitude. Thank you, I said, my voice filled with emotion. For what? He asked, his eyes crinkling with a smile. For everything, I replied. For being my partner, my rock, my love, for helping me find my way back to happiness. He kissed me gently, his touch a reminder of the love that had brought us together. Thank you, Claire, for being you, for loving me and for building this beautiful life with me. As we watched the stars twinkle in the night sky, I felt a sense of completeness. Our journey had come full circle, and we were ready to embrace the future with hope and excitement. No matter what challenges lay ahead, I knew we would face them together, with love, strength, and the unwavering bond that had carried us through so much. And so, our story continued, filled with new adventures, joys, and surprises. We had found our way back to happiness, and we were ready to share that happiness with the world. Our journey was only just beginning, and I couldn't wait to see what the future held for us. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. Your support and encouragement have meant the world to us, and we are grateful for each and every one of you. Here's to new beginnings, endless possibilities, and the unwavering power of love. With love and gratitude, Claire.